Let's get started then. Hopefully you guys, I was in group three and we had some good discussion. Hopefully everybody else too, as you know, we're talking about type of friends uh, as we are developing friendships, some things that we should be cautious of. So Miss Amanda. Uh, solo is our spokesperson. All right, Solo. And then he moved me to two. <laughs> All right. So today we talked about how like to dwell in like friendships and not to have somebody with like an issues, especially anger issues, because you don't want to like you don't want to have them start a problem. And then when you want to solve it, it even like it gets even worse and then you'll end up in trouble. But you also have to be a friend if you want to like be a good friend because you don't want to just um make other people do stuff for you and not do anything for them because that's just being a bad friend. Okay, very good, Solo. Excellent job. Good Wait. job, baby. Good job, good job, Solo. <laughs> Way to hold it down for group one. All right, uh, Miss Andrea, Mr. Dillion, Miss Marcella. Uh, who's our spokesperson in group two? Iron Man is our spokesperson. Iron Man Jonas. Hey, Jonas. I'm over there looking at you, Jonas. I just want you to know, man, you better you better stay on them push-ups. <laughs> coming for you, brother. <laughs> All right, Ms. Anderson. Okay. All right. Uh, so while we were in group two, like we talked a lot about um what, what I think his name was uh Solo was saying. Like we talked a lot about anger and stuff and like about the friends that you hang around and that you just have to be um, constantly mindful about the people you put yourself around like and in situations like um, stuff like that. Uh, you just, I mean, you can always have like, fr there's always going to be friends that have like anger issues or like issues just in general, but you just have to be able to know like what point that they will go over and you just got to be mindful like about putting yourself in situations and stuff. And we also talked about um, talked about what's it called, um, men and men and women like gassing each other up to like get up to that anger point. Like nobody just starts out like that unless That's they're it. just like they're just like a menace to society or something like that. But there's always like a cause building up to that, <laughs> and we just gotta learn to like be able to you know keep it chill at all times and stuff so that nobody builds up to that point and then nothing ends up coming bad out of out of that that's a yeah. great point jonas about gassing each other you know that's when you have the wrong friends uh in your circle that you know all of us can kind of get out of pocket but that's where your friends are supposed to calm you down you know not gas you up so that's a very right. awesome point about why you want believers and and, and and wise counsel around you so them times that you are out of pocket that somebody keeps you from doing something you don't want to do so very good job, Jonas. And then I know in my group, we got uh, the fabulous Miss Virginia, Nyla Cheeseboro. Okay, how y'all doing? Um, mm -hmm. So today we really talked about, we focused on um, being unequally yoked with people and trying to be friends with people who don't um, hold the same type of beliefs that we have it's kind of hard to have those type of friends who don't believe in what you believe in because they can't respect that boundary so um, it's pretty much finding the difference in between that and you can be cool with people like be associates with them but it's going to be hard trying to be friends with those people and actually call those people your friends if y'all don't have the equal amount of beliefs and then we also talked about um let me see let me see we talked about um, what is it? What was it? Building fire? What was the? What was that quote? So what did it say again, Miss Anderson? Oh, it was saying that uh, where there is no fuel, a fire goes out. Where there is no gossip, arguments come to an end. Thank you. So pretty much with that, that's like the old saying, like you can't fight fire with fire. But what you're getting out of that is that. <clears throat> You can't like build up on people that gossip. You just kind of got to leave those type of people alone because if you don't, and you get caught up with the wrong set of people because of this type of situation, you can get yourself in some real, you know, deep troubles. So we talked mainly about that. And I think that's all I can think of right now. Oh no, very good points. Very good points. Um, sounded like everyone had some, some great discussion. Um, 
you know, what we were talking about today, friendships are valuable, they're biblical. You know, uh, we talked about that last week that, you know, we need each other. We need fellowship and encouragement and covering and love. Uh, and God created us amongst each other. That's why uh, the Bible says, forsake not the assembly. You know, if, if we didn't need each other, then God would say, you know, stay in your own room, you know, but he says, forsake not the assembly, because, you know, there's going to be some tough times. You're going to need some, a miss, you know, like Miss Joyce said, you're going to need a Miss Amanda in your life. You're going to need somebody that's going to be there for you, to encourage you, to pray for you, to love you, to help you out of a situation. Uh, but many times um, we pick friends off the wrong things. We pick friends because they're popular. We pick friends because of their status. Um, we pick friends because they got a similar circumstance. So maybe, you know, we both came up in the hood together or we, we had a similar, we both didn't have dads in the home. So we connected and nothing wrong with that. But the scripture we read, uh, the first scripture that we read in 2 Corinthians clearly states though, that you need to have a friend that has the same value as you to go up. So now the importance of that, though, is that scripture, one thing we many of us probably didn't talk about in our groups is you've got to kind of check yourself in where you're at, because that scripture is saying, you know, we shouldn't have in our inner circle people that don't have the same godly values. But if you don't have them godly values, then how's that scripture going to apply to you? You're one of them people. And so that's what Nyla was talking about, that I need people in my circle that it doesn't matter where we came from, but our main connection should be that we have the same spiritual values. We both believe in God. We're both trying to, to be godly women or godly men. And then everything else should build around that. But what we do as friends, we build everything else. Oh, and then they ha if they happen to have a little something on God, that's cool. But, oh, you know, we, we, we Mayfield, that's why we friends, or we Northside, or we all go to North Central. And that shouldn't be nothing wrong with those connections or nothing wrong with the fact, like you said, we, uh, we, we all had the same circumstance. We grew up, you know, on hard times because you need those type of people that can relate. So there's nothing wrong with that. But it's dangerous if everybody is living off of circumstance and nobody's living off of God. OK, then y'all just become that click where y'all got it. It goes back to that worldly friendship. Y'all just a click, but nobody's helping each other be better. You know, oh, we, we all got, you know, you see that all the time. We got each other's back in the hood. Great. But how are we going to get each other out of the hood? How, how are we going to keep my mind right? You know, Nyla was saying that, you know, we were talking about, you know, girls getting drunk. And Nyla said that she had a friend that always wanted to get drunk. And Nyla was like, I don't want to be on that. I don't want to, I don't want to do something that goes against where I'm trying to be spiritually, but it was a conflict because her friend was always trying to pull here. So when, if you have these unbelievers and you're a believer, then the problem is they become tug of war friends. So all the time you trying to get them on God and they're trying not to go, you know? And so that's what I, I, I was clarifying. None of us is perfect. So Nyla and I were talking about that. You also don't, we're not trying to be self-righteous friends where I'm just too good for anybody. But when it says unbeliever, unbelievers, understand it's saying they emphatically don't believe what you are. They want to turn up. They don't see nothing wrong with dropping panties or nothing like that. And Nyla's saying, no, nah, the blueprint I'm following, I'm not really trying to be on none of that. And they don't agree at all. So with that, it becomes a tug of war. And that's not really friendship. Friendship is, remember, we're supposed to encourage each other up not have to feel like that. The other issue is in it can be toxic because you always arguing about values and think, hey, I'm trying to go here and you trying to go there. So that's why we say our inner circle, that scripture says our inner circle of friends should be built on our spiritual values so that we're always encouraging each other to do the right thing and we're always on the same page. Um, like Nyla also said, you, you got to be careful about those people that have anger issues. Uh, because particularly in your time, I found more than my time that, you know, you guys are connected by association. So we were saying, yo, if Jay got a friend that's going around starting drama, fighting with everybody in y'all, in y'all, in y'all where y'all live, 
if Jay's at the mall and his enemy see Jay, Jay getting it too. Or if, if Jonas's cousin is out there clowning and they see Jonas, they're like, yo, that's his cousin. They figure he's down by association. He getting whooped too. We saw Jonas at the fair. Hey, man, ain't he cousins with so-and-so that try to whoop your cousin? All right, well, let's whoop him. So eventually, you know, their drama will be your drama. And, you know, many of us, Jay and some others uh, on this call, and Christian, were in the, in the church when somebody, you know, Dillian was on, was there, uh, Miss Kamish, we were in the church when somebody's drama caught up with us. So all the, the havoc that they were creating in the street spilled over into the church. And now we in a situation where, man, we might get shot. We might get swung on over absolutely nothing we had to do with except we're associated with you. And so after that night, we even had to say, hey, brother, I love you, but, you know, man, you can't kick it with us as long as you're going to be out there doing that. Because I'm not trying to get shot with cats I don't even know. I ain't got no beef with. And that's what will happen if you guys have friends that are out there popping off on people, can't control their anger, you know. And once again, nothing wrong with us helping them up and saying, hey, you might need to get some counseling, brother, for that. But to allow those friends to to continue to navigate in that dangerous circumstance puts you in danger. And as I always tell everybody, when it comes to friends, the spirits have no name on it. So that same friend that's popping off on everybody else might turn around and pop off on you. Don't ever think that won't happen. Okay. When we talked about, you know, got the danger of gossip, people that are, are talking about everybody else's business and stirring up mess and mistrust and confusion. Once again, that's going to be association with you. So that's going to be drama, to unnecessary drama to your life because your friend is out there to, on Instagram talking about somebody in somebody's business that they had no business saying. And so when you talk, when we talk about gossip, just as a rule of thumb for everybody to understand, if it ain't got nothing to do with you, if it's not your situation, or if you're not trying to provide a solution, a sincere solution to the situation, then it's, no, it's not your, your, your business to be talking about. The only other exception to that, I would say, is if I'm trying to uh, give somebody some information because it might affect them. So it, I, Nyla might have somebody she's about to, to be friends with, and I know that this person is you know, good to steal from, from their friend. They got a, a, a factual history that this person robs their friend, they steal from them. So I might, hey, Nyla, I see you've been kicking it with Tamara. You, you might be careful. And that actually happened to me and I didn't take it serious enough and we got stung. Years ago, a mama came to me. She saw, you know, on a Tuesday night, a, a, an individual that was coming on Tuesday night and she pulled me aside and she said, Anderson, I'm not trying to down anybody, but I, I, I've got clear history on this individual that they used to live in my neighborhood and, they, and, and this individual and their brother used to steal all the time. Stuff would come up missing all the time. And once they moved out of the neighborhood, it stopped. And I, and I didn't want to believe it was true. And, and it was true, you know, but she, was, she wasn't trying to start nothing. She was sincerely trying to help me because she's like, Anderson, I don't want you or anyone else in the ministry to get stung because you trust in a lot of these kids. And so she wasn't trying to gossip. She was literally trying to help me understand, hey, you've got an individual that might cause you some harm. And I want to forewarn you that I have facts that this person will steal from you if you allow. And she was right. And, and this person got us a few times because I didn't take her, her words serious enough. And I wish I had. But if, if it's not one of them circumstances where you're, you're trying to warn, I know uh, a couple months ago, Miss Amanda you know, wasn't clear on something and I gave her some information so she would understand, Miss Amanda, this is why we had to make, the, this is why we had to put this person out the ministry. You know, so one trying to down them, but you need to understand the context so that you're clear and we're all on the same page. But other than that, if it ain't got nothing to do with you and you just arbitrarily talking about people, then the Bible says you out of order. So if I'm just up there saying, you know, uh, you know, I heard McKenzie stink. Well, OK, well, what are you saying that for, Anderson? McKenzie, you don't stink. <laughs> I just saw your face first. Um, but biblically, then Anderson, what, what, what's I got to do with you? you know, besides you sound like you hating on somebody. 
And there are people out there that because they don't have confidence in themselves and love themselves, then they get a kick out of downing other people, talking about other people. And you've got to understand that. Because if you're around, once again, if you've allowed that type of person in your circle, two things are going to happen. One, they're going to stir up a lot of drama that's eventually going to you know, associate with you. And two, that person might be talking about you. Spirits don't have no name on it. Hey, Anderson. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we were talking about that in our group, and I, and I um, shared with them something that the people used to say years ago. The older people used to say, a, a dog that'll bring a bone will take one away. Take one away. That's very true. So don't ever think, I don't care if it's your friend, cousin, whatever. If they're that type of individual, don't think that they won't do that to you. And then finally, you know, you want the, the, the people that uh, love and have your best interests as well. That's the, the, the balance of friendship we're supposed to have. We're thinking about the other person. People that are only in it for themselves, they only down when it's something in for them. Those aren't the friends you want to have. You want to have those people that they want to see you bless as much as you blessing them. When you got those friends in your life, then everybody, and, and you guys will find that type of relationship you're going to need in your marriage. One day, you know, praise God, some of y'all will get married and that is the number one, uh, you know, relationship you will have to use that where everybody has to give 110% towards the other person. And when you do that, you have a great marriage. But when somebody's just about them, just meet my needs, that's why a lot of marriages fail because you have selfish people going into marriages for their own wants and needs. And a marriage is about you giving, you trying to make your wife happy every day and your wife trying to make you happy every day and have your back. And when y'all do that, you have a great relationship. So that's why it's important to even in friendships, learn how to establish and find people that are that. And the final most important point is, as we talked about these type of friends to avoid, I want y'all to pray on making sure you're not those friends. Make sure you're not the one that uh, is toxic because even though you're in church, you ain't following godly principles. And we have people like that. They in church, but like, you know, they shouldn't be encouraging their friends to do ungodly things. You, everybody on this call in Light Squad and LWCC Youth Ministry, if we all own God, then we should always be encouraging somebody to do godly things. Now, if they don't want to listen, that's on them. But we should always be encouraging people to do godly things. We shouldn't be the person trying to pull people down because you're one of them unbelievers if you're doing that. We shouldn't be the people out there running our mouths about everybody uh, when the Bible says we should just be speaking love and encouragement. So if you don't want out there on Instagram running your mouth about everybody, talking about everybody behind their back, you need to repent of that and check yourself. You're the person that you know is out there only thinking about your needs only call somebody when you want something or need something, then you're that selfish person that needs to repent and check yourself. Because if we want good friends, the most important thing is we have to be good people. Because like-minded people attract people. So if you fake and got you know uh, anger management issues and, and cause drama, good people are not going to be want to be around you. Good friends are not going to want to be around that. Good friends want to be around other good friends. So that's the last point I want to leave y'all with is as we talked about these type of friends to avoid, go, go uh, to your room tonight, make sure and evaluate yourself and make sure I'm not any one of those people. Because if you are, then need to kind of repent and say, I've got to get better. If I want to have great friends, I got to, it starts with me. It starts with me being a good friend if I want to have other friends. Uh, chaperones, anything y'all wanted to add? Um, I want to, hey, this, this is a very good topic here. I, I like this. And um, I want to say something for the college students. Um, ha, especially if you, you know, you're all close and you communicate, make sure that you're doing a body check. Um, when I say body check, I'm not talking about, you know, like I'm, the deacon talking about people, your smell or what. I'm talking about everybody is accountable for somebody, you know what I'm saying? Making sure that you all are on the right path. You know, you're communicating with each other, you're, you're reading, you know, you're, you're getting that word and, you know, 
just making sure what you're doing out there, it, it reflects on the light squad and the church, on, on, your, on your, your church family. So everybody must be accountable for each other and always do a buddy check with each other. Good word. Good word. Anybody else? Um, did any of the uh, students have any questions or uh, comment that you guys wanted to add from today's discussion? Nope. Cool. Well, with that, um, hopefully you guys learned. Uh, we talked about this week type of friends to avoid. Next week, we're going to talk about the type of friend traits we should be looking for. All right. So like I said, we're going to slowly move through this and hopefully this is helping you guys navigate the type of friends uh, and friendships you, you should have uh, in your life. As promised, we want to get you guys off of here and everybody bow their heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone that was able to attend tonight. We hope that the word, the wisdom, the message and your blueprint um, stays in our heart and we have the faith to believe it and apply it in our lives. Uh, keep these young people safe, uh, whether they're in middle school, high school, college. Uh, give them the discipline to work hard and to believe that their hard work will have a payoff and that following God, you will do exceeding and abundant things in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.